friends, my name is Mei Lin and welcome back to my channel. I'm a flutist performer and music teacher located in the city of Kamloops, British Columbia. And this is my channel where we do all things flute. So thank you so much for joining me here today. In this video, we'll actually be returning back to my favorite series here, the how to play the flute. And today we'll be learning about how to warm up and harmonic notes and introducing the chromatic scale. So if you're interested, then just keep on watching. As per usual, if you do have any questions throughout the video, please feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. I try to get back to them as soon as I see them. Also, if you are having issues when it comes to practicing you're not really sure how to structure your practice session and you need something to help motivate you and get your goals completed then feel free to check out my free practice guide also located in the description down below it gives you eight easy steps to follow and it's also an easy printable PDF so that you can bring it wherever you need to go when you're practicing so let's just get right into today's video so as you were all familiar with before if you watch my first series you'll know about the Trevor Y beginners book for the flute part one and now now, da, 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 we have Trevor Wise Beginners Book for the Flute Part 2. So we're actually going to be doing this book from the beginning all the way to the end and by then you'll be able to play at a rough intermediate level which is going to be amazing. So I'm really excited to get through this series. I'm glad to be able to do this one again for you all today. So I'm actually going to be starting on page 55 here and we're going to start with a warm up. So the warm up, I'm just going to put it up right over here. So throughout this warm up, there are things called enharmonic notes. So what is an enharmonic note? An enharmonic note essentially is the same sounding pitch, the same note, but it has two or more different names. So for example, anything under the bracket, it is the exact same note just with a different name. So the first one we have here, we have A sharp in B flat. So if you're to look at a, p a keyboard, I'm going to put it here. Let's find A. So I'm going to mark A here. And then what happens when we sharpen A? That means we go up one semitone. So that would bring us to this black key here. If we go from B and then we just flatten it, again, we are doing the same thing. We're going to go down one semitone rather than up since flat makes notes go down a semitone. We go to the exact same note on the keyboard. If you want to play it on your flute, it would sound like this. So this is A sharp and this is B flat. So again, exactly the same sounding note, just with a different name. And we can do this with every single letter name depending on the different key signature. Another example that we have here in the warm up is G sharp A flat. So those are the two examples that we have there. So we have A sharp to B flat, and we also have A flat to G sharp. I'm not gonna clap this one just because it is just half notes here, but I will play it for you just so you can have an idea of what it sounds like. It's really great to read through these for your sight reading skills, especially since accidentals are always the most difficult thing to read when you're sight reading. Sight reading meaning you're reading and playing music that you haven't looked at before. This is a great way to start building up those skills. I'm gonna go at this tempo. One, two, three. Up, what you want to do is it's always great to play really nice long elongated notes so that really just helps to warm up your breathing your overall embouchure and it activates everything that you need to do when you're playing so again remember the three items that I always like to mention is your breath your lips or embouchure and your fingers so when you are playing a warm-up you're not so much focusing on your fingers although you should be making sure that you do have proper finger posture you're really focusing on taking really really good breaths as well as making sure your embouchure is set in a really nice place so there's no tension, you're not getting any smiles, we don't want a smile embouchure. We also don't want our corners to be brought back really far either. We want to make a, just a very relaxed, almost like a frown embouchure. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing as I did last time. It's exactly the same rhythm, so I'm just going to play through just so that you can read through it um, while also listening. So one, two, three. <laughs>
both of those warm up lines, we actually play two different chromatic scales. So now I'm going to introduce what a chromatic scale is. So a chromatic scale essentially is just going up by one semitone and coming down by one semitone. So if you were to play it on a keyboard, you would just be going from key to key to key to key to key. So not skipping any of the black keys. So you'd go from like C, here I'll put it up here again. So C to C sharp, D, D sharp, E. And so, so essentially what we were just doing, again, we were playing it nice and slow. Uh, I'm gonna show you the chromatic scale right over here. And this chromatic scale, we're doing one octave from our low F to our middle F. So again, I'm not gonna clap this one. Um, I will put on a metronome though, just so that we have a good steady pulse here. And if you wanna take this slower, incorporate this into your warm up session. I would recommend as you get more comfortable with the chromatic scale, slowly increasing it as it'll help with your finger dexterity. So I'm gonna be playing this at 80 equals a quarter note. But again, if you need to slow it down, feel free to go into that little, into the settings of the video and slow it down by maybe 1.1%. Or if you feel like it's a little bit too slow and you wanna try it faster, then you can try speeding up the video as well. One, two, three. <laughs> try practicing that really nice and slow if you're still feeling like your finger coordination isn't quite there and then slowly speed it up maybe two clicks per day or three or four depending on how you are feeling comfortable do not move on from a certain tempo until you know that you feel completely ready you're not doing any mistakes over and over and you feel very confident in yourself Okay, so now that we've gone through our warm up, we've learned about the chromatic scale. Now we're going to play a little excerpt from Saint Song, known as the Aquarium. So I'm gonna put that up right over here. So this is a really, really beautiful melody that you can hear it in an orchestral setting known as the Carnival of the Animals. So this one is the Aquarium. So we're gonna start by looking at our key signature and our time signature first. So it can, since we see that there's one sharp, it can either be in G major or it can also be in E minor. So let's take a look and see if we can find any accidentals that might suggest that we're in either E minor or if there are none in, it would say G major. I do see a few accidentals here. So I see A sharp and I also see G sharp as well. We don't see any Ds in here in this little excerpt here, but this one is in E minor. Again, I'm not going to clap this one just because it is very straightforward. We just have some quarters and we're holding a dotted half note, which is three beats. And just make sure if you feel like you're uncomfortable with any of those notes, any of those accidentals, that you definitely do write those in as well. Don't forget we also have a repeat here so we're repeating at the beginning, we got the first ending and then repeat all the way to the beginning again and then we end on the second ending. So I'm going to take it at a nice slow speed, that's what lento means, slowly. And I'm actually going to put it on the metronome for this. So each click is 45, so 45 beats per minute. Three.
that one's gonna be really great again for focusing in on your tone and your tone colors really experiment with the dynamics here because it is we're at a such a slow tempo it's gonna be really important to get the really big comparisons between the piano meaning softly and then when you crescendo you can write in whatever dynamics you want to write so what I did was I actually got to about a mezzo forte then I came back down to the piano after the E and then in the third bar to that B again I started piano just a little bit louder a stronger mezzo forte and then I went all the way uh, on that fourth bar from piano to a beautiful forte and then back again. So this is all something that you can experiment with and really make uh, certain that you are practicing with those dynamics. And again, a little tip with dynamics, it's all about the amount of air you're putting into the instrument. So just be careful you're not speeding up the air too much or lowering it too much because you do want the pitch to be the same, but you can get a louder sound by putting more air into the instrument and then you can get softer by slowly taking away the amount of air as well. So that's definitely something that you can experiment with this piece. Okay, and then last but not least, we're gonna end this uh, today's lesson with a duet. I'm gonna put up the acrobat right over here. We're gonna take a look at our regular things here. So the key signature and the time signature, of course, we are in E minor. So we do see that one sharp there. Again, it could either be G major or E minor, one of those two. And again, we see lots of accidentals in there. We also end on an E, both the first and the second end that really helps to solidify that we're in E minor and then we are in two four times so that means we are playing two quarter notes per bar and then we also have a note here for the time and it says mesto and in brackets so sadly so again we want this to be nice and sad so sadly could be slow as well so what I'm going to be doing with this duet here is I'm going to play each part separately with the metronome in the back and then afterwards I'm going to actually just have it played together so that you guys have an idea of what it sounds like when you're playing along with me and what it should sound like. Okay, so I'm going to start with the first part here. So again, this is a quarter note equals 54. One, two, one. end of the second ending we do have a little bit of a rowl there so that means we're all in tondo which means to slow down gradually but because I am having it with the metronome I'm gonna play very very slightly but not so much and again it also since it's at the end you wouldn't want to make it super dramatic as well okay so now I'm gonna be doing the second part here again the same tempo so uh, quarter note equals 54 one two one <gasps> complete second or the complete duet right here. Thank you everyone for joining me here today. As a recap, 
what we did was we learned all about warming up, we learned about enharmonic notes, we learned about the chromatic scale, and then we also played through the aquarium and the acrobat. So as always, if you did have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. I try my best to get back to them as soon as possible. And of course, if you are having issues when it comes to practicing, check out my free practice guide, also located in the description down below. And if you do enjoy this series, please feel free to give me a like, just so I know that you are really enjoying these videos again, and also to subscribe for videos just like this. In next week's video, I'll be covering compound times. So so be sure to stick around. So as always, thank you so much for joining me here today. And as always, happy flitting.